You've been keeping track of what the CIA and the Defense Department have been doing for a long time as far as using us as guinea pigs for mind control and other types of horrible things they have in mind for us and the rest of the people in the world. What are some of them? Well, uh, it started out basically with the CIA doing experimentations on their own men to discover if they could get rid of uh, agents who were going to quit the department and still had classified information. So they utilized different types of drugs and pain and hypnosis and electric shock to try and get the guys to forget. Then they also did experimentations to using different chemicals to see if you can induce a person to commit a crime or induce him to do that or to do this. Um, of course, the CI claimed that it didn't carry it through. Um, the documentation we got was actually that they did that. Then we came across the overall project called MK Ultra. Its earlier code name was Artichoke, and that included 149 subprojects. 149. Yeah. And those subprojects range from what I just described to open air testing in the United States, uh, experimentation on prisoners, experimentation on soldiers, experimentation on college students. Uh, uh, would these people know they were being experimented on and gave their approval? No, except for the quote unquote volunteer. <laughs> and voluntary army soldiers. Oh yeah. And the, the way the volunteer army program worked is it started in 1959 and the guys were just told that they would be doing experimentation on new weapons, right? And then they get to Fort Detrick, Maryland where the experimentation was done and find out that they were going to be doing it on drugs and chemicals. But they were never told what they would be experimented on. You know, they just knew that they went crazy for a couple of days or so forth and so on and then years later have uh, Similar things to the guys who have had Agent Orange, because there's one chemical that was used called BZ, and it's 100 times stronger than LSD. It's a, it's a very gross drug that causes a person to totally go out of his head for at least 12 hours, sometimes up to two to three weeks where he doesn't even know where he, where he is or who he is. Are there residual effects to BZ? Yes. Now, the Army at first said that they'd done testing to discover it, and they said there weren't any residual tests, any residual oh, yeah. results. It's harmless. It's harmless. They always say that. Right. And we did a campaign to find the soldiers who had been experimented on, and we found approximately 40 in the U.S., all of which had been exper experiencing extreme emotional and physical upset since that time, you know, with right. children with birth defects, the oh, same sort of thing oh, as Agent Orange. But the Army, as part of the CIA's experimentations, wanted to simulate chemical biological warfare attacks and to see what effect it would have on different Americans, how far it could go in, and, and so forth, and also test to see how they could use it on other countries. The different kinds of things that they did without the citizens' permission any time on any of these tests was... Or even knowing about it. Oh, no. no. Of course not. You know, why, you know, they didn't even say they were going to do a test, you know. They uh, experimented with the use of mosquitoes, where they just let tons of mosquitoes go in, in, in uh, South Carolina. And uh, just to test how far the mosquitoes would go, because they had the idea that maybe if they used a particular strain of mosquitoes in, say, Soviet Russia, then those guys aren't immune to yellow fever, because they don't have yellow fever there. Then the Russia could be infected with an epidemic of yellow fever. What are the but types? our guys were tested on it. Not oh. the Russians were tested on it. We were tested on it. What other types of things did they drop? Um, yeah. They dropped a, a particular bacterium called, I can't pronounce it really well, it's sir, right. but no. whatever. And it was used, and I'm sure that most people have heard of it, in San Francisco, where um, at least 10 people um, got sick from it and one died. In fact, Edward Neven the third, is suing the Army currently because of his father who died from it. Now that chemical was also utilized in Florida, and it's a bacteria that causes a pneumonia type disease, you know, respiratory problems and things like that. So that was tested in San Francisco and in, in Florida. Then they also used other chemicals that they've not released what they are yet in uh, New York. They released it in subways and in tunnels and in turnpikes in 1965 and in 19, no, 1956 and 1966 in two different tests. Um, then the major thing that they used after that was zinc cadmium sulfide, which the Army spokesman have again said is harmless. But the only scientific studies that we've come up with is says that it, is, it could be very harmful. 
In fact, if a person is exposed to us continuously, he would, would, could, it could cause death. But it would definitely cause uh, anyone with respiratory problems to get it agitated to a degree that they would either get very, very sick or they could actually die. Well, they've used uh, Texas and Texans as guinea pigs for oh, yes. a long time, haven't they? Yes, and that's the cadmium sulfide. Now, that was done in, in what we have documented in at least 15 different locations in the U.S., one of which was in Dallas in 1961. A series of 34 different tests were done off a TV tower where they, they blew it out to a very large area, and the whole test area went from Dallas all the way down to Killeen, Texas which is a long way, it's like 160 miles. Mm -hmm. Well, Austin's been involved in one of these tests too. Right. It? The other series of tests that we discovered with zinc cadmium sulfide was in, the test area was described as from Corpus Christi up to San Antonio, Austin, and over to Houston. So it was that area. And they sprayed off jet bombers the zinc cadmium sulfide by, by following the coastline, and then it would blow in to the coast. And then they set up samplers to see the concentration and how far it would go in. That was done in 1965 in that area. Then a year later, they did a similar type test, but this time the simulant used was 23 tons of glass beads oh, and glass cork particles. Beads. Glass yes. beads and cork particles, and we inhale these? Yeah, yeah. Now, those wouldn't be as dangerous as zinc cadmium sulfide, but I don't think we I'd don't. want to breathe 23 tons of glass beads. No. So, so, and again... The thing is, now with these tests, we are currently trying to get Texas senators at least. Uh, we've given a submission to, tech, to Senator Tower and, mm -hmm. and Benson and, and Pickle to ask them to please put a ban on any chemical biological warfare testing without anyone's permission. So that if a city wants to, you know, be utilized as a guinea pig, then they have the ability to say whether they want it or not. I mean, it's just not okay for Dallas to get sprayed and everyone in the, in the city get that effect without their, without their permission. And so we were trying currently to get a ban on this. What about the certain types of testing of uh, strictly racial or ethnic nature? Well, we discovered that actually what they phrased it as is ethnic weapons. Now, in the United States, we've been able to document that Negro men were experimented on with LSD and other hallucinogenics who were either mental patients or uh, prisoners. And the attempt with that is to discover how different ethnic groups or races would not be as immune to something as someone else, like as with Soviet Russia, they don't have um, yellow fever. So those guys that hadn't built up an immunity to yellow fever yet. So if you used a particular chemical in that area, then say Russians may not have that immunity and might get an epidemic that's real quick and then disable the country immediately. That reminds so. me back in the old days, the good old days when the army and all used to give the smallpox infested, infected blankets to the Indians. Right. We haven't really changed much, have we? Except we've gone on a mass produced basis and have the ability to spread it throughout the whole world. Well, the irresponsibility with it is, is what is a terrible thing because the Army apparently felt like some of the guys are good guys and they really probably felt that we need to do chemical biological warfare tests to make sure we don't get attacked on this. I mean, what if Russia came over here and did a chemical, you know, sprayed a chemical in the United States? What would happen? But who was responsible for telling the Army that that chemical was safe? I mean, that has never been in any of the documentation. Who was responsible for saying that BZ, which is an extremely dangerous drug, could be used on our soldiers? Who said it was okay to use Agent Orange and that it was harmless? You know, those guys cannot be found. They're not in the documentation. You, you can find out about all the tests, and then, of course, you go to the Army because the Army conducted the test. But who in the Army said it was okay? And that's what I think is, is the thing that must be found out because those individuals, I think, should be prosecuted. It was a criminal. It was a criminal thing. It shouldn't have been done.